Hi, John with eTrailer. Today, we're taking a look at Ground Control 3.0 Auto Leveling System by Lippert. Even on a larger model toy hauler like this one, coming in at 42 feet, Lippert has them covered with a six-point system. Don't have a 42-footer, you got one smaller, Lippert still has you covered with a four-point system. All right, so you've gotten to the campground, you've chalked your tires. The next step that you normally do is you go around from side to side and you adjust and manually adjust your jacks out. No longer. This system, with one push of a button, is going to get you your camper grounded and leveled. First step, you're going to come to the front for the landing gear. You're going to extend your legs out. General rule of thumb is three to five inches off the ground. Do this on both sides. With your landing gear down, you'll want to pull the pin on your tow vehicle and then come to your inner panel here. And you're going to see the LCD control panel. You'll just hit power and you'll hit front to extend the front jacks. Now run the jacks down and when you have a clear view of your tow vehicle, you just run them down until you get the weight off so that you can pull forward and clear the camper. With just the push of a button, it's going to begin to extend or retract the front landing gear, followed by the rear jacks, and finally the middle stabilizers. Now on a six jack system such as this, it uses the front landing gear and the rear jack to do all of the leveling, front and rear, side to side. The middle jacks are simply just stabilizers. And in less than five minutes at the campsite, you've set up and leveled your camper. Now the Ground Control 3.0 is a system that we do like here, and a lot of people like it. Um, it, it is all electric, so one thing to keep in mind um, that people report some of the problems that they have, and it's just minor things, almost always come back to a poor performing 12 volt electrical system. So um, if you do get this system, you definitely want to make sure that you have strong battery or batteries. Now, as far as installation goes, uh, we really do our best here to make sure that, that the products like this ground control system is something that you are going to be happy with and something that you can install. We are in constant communication with Lippert to make sure that these products are performing and installing like they're supposed to. Now, we go through our installation here pretty methodically and we hope it's not going to be too long-winded, but there's some pointers that you're going to need to know uh, with your own camper when installing this and we try to review that um, just as best as we can. So if you're interested in this system uh, and you want to see it work, you want to see how it installs, stick around and we'll show you. Now before we begin our installation of the leveling system, there's a few things that we need to know. Um, one is that we're going to be installing six jacks total on this camper. It's three per side, right? Three on the passenger side, three on the driver's side. Um, and location is very, very important when installing the system. It needs to be able to uh, work as functioned. Uh, you don't want anything too low that's going to get knocked off on a speed bump um, or anything else like that. So what we're going to be looking at and determining today is our departure angle and our approach angle. Now the departure angle, as you can see, we ran a wire from the back of the bumper up high on the frame, down to the middle of our back tire here. This gives us our departure angle. And why is that important? Well, when we're setting up our jacks, um, in, the, in the directions, you're gonna see that we have some guidelines. And now these are just guidelines. Um, if you have obstacles in the way, uh, then you need to be able to move, you know, a half inch or an inch one way or the other, that's fine. So in our guidelines, from, they give us 12 inches from the back of the spring hanger here to about the center of our bracket. Now, like I said, these are guidelines. You want them to be the same on both sides. You could run into issues with plumbing underneath your camper or drains or everything else. But what we're gonna be looking for when we mount this up is about a minimum of seven inches from the bottom of our foot to the ground. I don't have the foot on this jack right now, but that's the adjustment we're gonna give. Now, they give us that guideline um, in the direction because roughly you're gonna find that minimum of seven inches, about 12 inches from the back of your spring hanger. So that's important 
for our departure angle. Now we can talk about the approach angle. We do the same thing, except we go from the middle of the front tire up to the front of our camper on the frame. That's gonna give us our approach angle. But as far as the clearances and everything else that we need, that remains the same. Our middle jack here isn't really gonna be a leveling jack. It's more of a stabilizing jack. But again, we want that, min we want that minimum of seven inches clearance from the ground up to the bottom of the jack. So again, 12 inches roughly. As you can see, we brought ours a little bit more forward. We had some clearance issues. This has a slide out on it and we have mechanics that we don't wanna get into. So we're able to push this forward as long as we can match that on the other side of the camper, we're good. Now, that's gonna bring us to the front jacks. These are a little bit easier to set up mostly because they're gonna be replacing the existing jacks that you have. Now we'll have to climb in here, remove these jacks, and then install our new ones. But this is a major component of the leveling system as well as the rear jacks. Now one last thing to keep in mind um, while we're choosing our jack location um, is that we're gonna be installing sensors. Uh, this one in particular is the rear sensor and it does matter the orientation and where you put it on your camper. Um, as you can see, it says front and rear on it and it's gonna be mounted up. Now this sensor has to be located either dead even with the jacks that we put up in the rear or it can be mounted behind it, but it needs to be mounted in the center uh, of the camper left and right. And we also have another sensor uh, that goes up in the front, kind of the same thing. Uh, now this sensor is okay to be exposed to the elements. We're still going to try to flush mount it on the bottom. The front sensor needs to be mounted in the furthest most compartment. That's okay. We're gonna be up in that compartment anyway when we're removing our old jacks. We'll show you in just a second. So to remove this front um, bulkhead right here, it was only two screws uh, to get this out. And that gives us all of the access to what we need right now, which is we're gonna have our landing gear up here in the front, the crossbar, and then the space that we need to mount our front sensor. It's gonna be out of the elements, uh, clean and dry in here. It's gonna be perfect. So um, even though this is more of a generic video, um, a lot of these campers are set up the same way. So if you have a lower storage like this, more than likely you're gonna have a bulkhead like this that can come out and make your life a little bit easier. One last thing before we get started. It's just, uh, it's notable to me because I appreciate things like this. Lippert does a really great job of organizing and labeling all of our stuff. This is the biggest sandwich bag you'll ever see of wiring. Um, but everything's clearly marked and clearly labeled. Um, and, and I appreciate that because this is, um, it's a lot to install one of these kits. But, um, but you can do this at home. It's one of the reasons why we didn't put this camper on a lift. I just want to prove that uh, this, even a system like this, that we can install this on the ground. If I can do this here on the ground, then you can do this um, on your driveway or in your shop as well. Um, you know, for instance, this is the, the front controller that we're going to be installing in, in uh, one of the next few steps here. Um, and it's just clearly marked, clearly labeled and it's great. I think they did a great job. So uh, anyway, with that being said, let's go ahead and get this thing installed. Needs to be unbolted from both sides, both the passenger and the driver's side. Now, I've unbolted this one, and I'll just tell you right now that they normally slide in, and this one's not budging. So I'm going to try to unbolt it from that side and see if I have enough slack to get the crossbar off and then we can turn our attention to in the motor and then unbolting the actual jacks and getting them out of here. So we're at the front of the camper right now and we've opened up this access door. I just wanted to show you uh, before I get too far into it, these are the brackets that I'm talking about that are holding these jacks in place. We have one at the top and then we have one at the bottom. Um, and these are kind of tight tolerances in here. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to get a good shot of what I'm doing, but I'm basically gonna just be loosening these up and I'm gonna try to slide this jack one way or another um, you can see here, this thing almost, you can see the end of the motor right here, and it almost wants to come off. It's just not. So, you know, one of these things, that's okay, because these jacks are coming out, we're not reusing them. This crossbar, we're not reusing. So if you're at home and you want to cut that in half, 
go for it. Um, none of this is going to get reused. These new jacks that we're putting in are completely independent of each other. They all have their own motors and they're going to be talking to the controller. Now before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I'm going to pull the fuse for the front landing jacks up here so that we can cut this loose. Uh, this way, by cutting that loose and pulling the fuse, we don't have to worry about shorting out anything. On the bottom side of your camper here, we're going to have to take the adjuster lever off. It's two 10 millimeter bolts. Now come off like this, and that'll allow our jack to slide up into the camper so we can pull it out. Okay, so I've got the two carriage bolts out that are holding this leg up, and as a side note, uh, I got vice grips, clamped them to, that, to the crossbar, and hit it with a hammer, and it slid in and out for us. So if you're having trouble, try that as well. So I'm gonna slide this leg up. You need to be careful, they're kind of heavy, at least this one is. This one comes out just like this. This is the one with the motor on it. Um, so the one on this side is kind of tight quarters. We have a generator box right here. Um, it's going to come out the same way, you just, but on that side you don't have to worry about the motor. So we're going to come under here and remove everything we did with this one and lift it up and out. Now this one, this one was tough because we have a generator uh, compartment here and um, the owner had previously cut a hole in here to try to access this side um, and we ended up having to take a big pry bar and just push back um, the middle of this generator compartment here so we can get this jack out. It probably could have slid out the bottom, but that's not going to do us any good because the new jacks have to come in from this side. They got the motors up on top. So um, I, wanted to, I wanted to remove this one the same way that I have to put the new ones in. So uh, I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna go grab one of our new uh, landing gear jacks here and get it in here. This is what our front jacks are gonna look like. You'll notice these are um, the long ones that are gonna be in your kit. The middle and the back jacks are considerably shorter uh, and they have a different look to them as well. Um, we're going to be installing these right now, and one thing I wanted to show you, this was the old one, and you'll see the tabs on the front and the back right here, and this is how it was oriented in the camper. We're going to want to do the same thing uh, with our landing gear here, because once you get, once you pick these up, they're, they're kind of heavy, and you need to know which way that they're going to go in. So these tabs are on the top here, so we're going to be mounting this like this in the camper with the tabs on the side. Also, one thing to mention here uh, that these are not side specific. Uh, this one can go on the driver's side or the passenger side. Uh, same with this one. It doesn't matter what side they go on. Now you're going to get a serious bag of hardware here from Lippert. Um, to mount our front landing gear, this is what you need to find, the four carriage bolts with the nylock nuts. Now there's other nuts in this kit that don't have the nylon ring inside of it. You need to make sure that you get all four. So there'll be two for the left side and two for the right side to mount them up. Now as far as the height placement of the jack, we're, that's going to be determined by these tabs here that we talked about earlier. This tab and then the one down here. And these will kind of self-seat on the back side, but you know you're in the right position when the top tab is just below this upper bracket and the bottom tab is just above the lower bracket. So we're going to take our new hardware here, that's a carriage bolt. This upper bracket was super tight just to let you know. I, um, I'm going to hammer it in with a dead blow hammer here, uh, this carriage bolt, but you may have to use um, either a pry bar or uh, even just the old carriage bolt 
and get it in there and kind of wedge it back. Um, it's just a tight fit back there for this top one. So we'll get this in here. Now as far as torque settings go when you're tightening these down, um, in the instructions they'll tell you just to, to tighten these down until the gap uh, in between these two brackets here is less than two and a half inches. The hardware that comes in your kit will be nine sixteenths. All right, so this is tight for now. We'll come back and zip tie these wires when we need to hook them up. Now, once we have the jack tight up here in the compartment, we're gonna come below and we're going to bolt on our pull pin at the bottom. This is going to, this is what you pull when you need the extension to come down with your, with your landing gear here. And this comes, this gets bolted on just like your other one came off here. Got the two nylock nuts. Let's go on just like this. And just reinstall the nylock nuts here and snug that up. This will probably be one of the easier things that we install today. And we're just snugging this up. There's no need to go too crazy with it. Now we can install the extension bar. And we need the holes going left and right here. And just make sure everything's working right and it locks into place. Then the feet will come in probably three different boxes. Uh, it's two of these feet per box. You're going to get new pins and we could mount these. On just like this and that's pretty much going to be a complete installation of the landing gear here on the driver's side so everything that we did repeat that for the passenger side now this is going to bring us to the mid and rear jacks uh, on our camper here now uh, in the beginning of this video I told you about some of the guidelines that we have um, you know like 12 inches from the spring hanger back for the rear and 12 inches forward from the spring hanger for the mid jack. Now, in an ideal situation, that's where you would want to mount them. However, all of these campers, um, there's just various things on them, such as uh, wheelbase, height, everything like that, and you're just not always gonna be able to meet those guidelines, um, just like in our instance here with this toy hauler. So we'll show you where we put our brackets and why we put them there. Uh, that way, if you run into issues uh, with your camper, you'll know what to do. So let's begin with the very rear jacks. Um, now, as you can see, we have the spring hanger here and 12 inches puts us right here. So ideally on this side, we could have gone the 12 inches from the rear of the spring hanger. But if you look underneath on the other side, we have a sewer pipe. Now this is not okay. It's not okay to have um, the bracket a little further back. It's more important that our brackets are the same distance on both the driver's side and the passenger side from the rear of our spring hanger. So, as you can see on this one, we found this location, which is gonna work, and it's more than the 12 inches. It's more like 14 inches from here to the bracket. And although the 14 inches clears the sewer pipe on the other side, if we went any further, we're gonna run into stairs on this side. So this is really one of those situations where we have just a limited area to work with. So for us, um, in this situation, for us to clear the stairs and to clear the sewer pipe without cutting it and rerouting it, which is an option and it's fine, but um, if we don't have to, we won't. This is what we came up with and this is why we came up with this location for the brackets on this side. Now there's one more thing that we need to consider as well. We're going to mock up our rear jack with the foot plate installed um, because what we want to check 
is the clearance, the ground clearance. And we want to make sure that our minimum ground clearance of seven inches won't interfere with our departure angle. So with our jack mocked up, you can see that our foot plate is sitting at seven and a half inches. It's a half inch above the minimum of seven inches. Basically, we don't want to go any less than seven inches. You can see that our departure angle here comes in at five and a half inches. So we are two inches above our departure angle, which is gonna work for us. This gets us a solid location for our rear jacks on both sides. We're not gonna have any clearance issues with the stairs and the motor. We're not gonna have any clearance issues with hooking up um, the wastewater pipes on the other side. Um, we're well within our range for the departure angle and both the ground clearance. So we can move on and actually drill into the frame and install these permanently. So let's begin our installation of the bracket here. As you can see, I've got a propane line that I need to move. Um, and really, we're just gonna tuck these ears underneath of it. So we can bring this down. Now remove the sheet metal screw here. That's going to give us enough flex to stick the bracket up. Now, before I do that, I want to show you um, the bracket's going to mount uh, four holes on the side. You have one, two, three, and four. And on the bottom, there's four holes here. Only two need to be used, though. It's going to be dependent on how your frame lines up with one of these holes. So whatever your frame lines up with, that's what we're going to use. So we'll tuck this back here. We'll get our measurement. Now when drilling into the frame, we're gonna be using a 5 16 drill bit, um, but I'm gonna use a larger 7 16 just right now to mark our center point inside the holes here. Now we're gonna have a center point. I'm gonna do this on all the locations that we need it. So I've got the 5 16 bit in. We're gonna start with the two bottom ones here. Um, I did notice that uh, when we were drilling the ones up here, this, this bracket was wanting to walk on me because I couldn't get a, a uh, clamp on the other side over here. So I'm gonna start with these down here and get this bolted up so that this, this bracket won't walk on us. Now our self-tapping bolts are gonna be separate from that big bag uh, of hardware. Maybe. Ours was. Yours may not be. Maybe they just put it in a different bag for us. But uh, you can I easily identify these. They're going to have a slot in the top up here, and they're going to be, they're going to look like self-tappers because they are. So once you have your holes drilled under here and you run the self-tappers in, you need to be careful um, when you're running these bottom ones in. Actually, all of them. Um, so you might be tempted to use um, impact tools to do this. And you want to try your best not to. If you can run them in and start them by hand and run them in, that's going to be your best bet. We're not talking about big, heavy bolts here that are holding this up here. Um, and, uh, you know, this frame, really what we're doing with these bolts is just securing this bracket to the frame to keep it from moving. Now, after we've drilled the bottom in and we have our bolts secured, then we can go ahead and drill out the four locations on the side here. Okay, so we did the same thing. We have all four of these torqued to the specs in our installation manual. Now, something you do want to uh, keep in mind as you're drilling through this way on the frame, you could have tanks on the other side of this, so don't drill too deeply. Um, these bolts are going to come through probably about maybe half an inch or so uh, once they're drilled and go through this plate and the frame itself. So you should be okay as far as clearances with tanks on the inside, but if you're running your drill bit all the way in, you definitely don't wanna contact your tank. Unlike the landing gear, uh, where orientation doesn't really matter too much, um, Lippert recommends having the motors behind the jacks. So these will be side specific, although um, if you get into a tight spot, I don't think 
uh, it matters if the motors are in front or not. They're probably thinking um, weathering and weather spray, all of that stuff, and just keeping the motors behind the jacks. So uh, for, the, for the curb side like this, or the passenger side, we're gonna have the motors behind the back, so make sure your jacks are aligned like this. And then on the other side, the same thing. So it's coming time to bolt these up. These jacks will take six of these bolts in your kit and six flange nuts. Now we already have the height set for our departure angle and for our uh, ground clearance. So I know where to put this and bolt this up. In our case, it was just having our plate level with our bracket here. So these are going to get three per side, and it really um, just comes down to which ones are going to work for you. There's not really a rhyme or reason. In this instance, I'm going to go the extreme bottom, the extreme top, and then I have some I have some options here in the middle. So we can go here, here, or here. I don't know. Just for me, since I have a hole here and here, this is in the middle. That's where I chose it. I don't. I don't think it really matters, um, just as long as they're going to be the same and these are all going to be secured. So it's going to take, like I said, a total of six. It's going to be three per side here. So I've got a 19 millimeter wrench on the front and a 19 millimeter socket on the back. And we're going to torque these to the specs. It's either 19 millimeter or three quarter, whatever you have. Now with the curbside torqued, we can move over here to the roadside, do the exact same thing, torque this down, and then we're gonna move on to the middle jacks. Again, you're gonna have things that you need to consider just like we did on this toy hauler. We have a slide right here. Um, we also have a slide on the other side, not in the same position though, it's uh, forward just a little bit. So, um, so we can go back to what we said, like the rules that we can break uh, or, or bend, and then there's rules that we can't break. And so ideally, you're going to hear that word a lot, ideally this jack, um, they said 12 inches, and also ideally, uh, since we extended the back jack, say another 10 inches or so, then this forward jack here, the middle jack, should be about the same distance. Now this is one of the rules that we can bend a little bit. Um, and the reason being that this trailer is so high and so long, the approach angle. The rules that we can't break, we can't interfere with the approach angle of our foot, we, and we can't go down any closer than seven inches to the ground. These, these are rules that we can't break at all. So, how we had to come up with our bracket location for the front uh, is kind of the same thing that we did in the back. We had to check both sides, get them the exact same from the forward spring hanger to here. So they are the same curbside and roadside, the same distance from here to here. They are not the same from um, our back jack back there. If you'll notice, that's a little bit closer to the axle than the front one here. This is one of the rules that we can bend, but it's not without um, some things to consider once this is installed. Um, it's best to think of our axle here and the trailer like a seesaw. Um, if we, in ideal situation, if we could keep the jacks the same on either side, the same distance, that would be best. Um, in this instance, we can't, so there's things to consider. If we park on a location that's not level, um, the front's gonna level out, the rear's gonna level out, and these jacks, these center ones here, are gonna come down. Uh, they only have 20 inches of stroke. So because this is more forward from the axle, it could run out at the bottom. So uh, meaning when you park on an unlevel surface, it's gonna be a very good idea to get some blocks and block this middle jack here. So with all that being said, and you know, honestly, we're trying not to be too wordy here, but um, you know, this this situation in this bracket, we're just trying to explain um, why we came up with this location and and how you can overcome some of your obstacles on your trailer as well, just so you know what to do. So in our instance today, same thing, we had to 
We had to take the line off. We tucked that up. We found a spot on the other side of the camper where these are going to be equidistant uh, from the from the axle. So this works for us. Um, so from here, these brackets and these jacks are going to install the exact same way that the rear ones that we just did. So we're going to get these on here right now. So we ran into a problem. Um, and there's chances are that you may run into a problem also with your camper. So on our mid jack here, you can see the propane line. We took care of that. But we have the crossbar here for our slide. And it's blocking the upper holes where we need to get to. So I just wanted to take this uh, opportunity to show you how we can easily overcome this uh, with minimal tools. So our first step's going to be, uh, we're going to follow the bar all the way to this side from our bracket and we're going to remove the bolt that's holding our bracket on right here. Um, in our instance it's two uh, seven sixteenths. It's a bolt, seven sixteenths, nut and bolt. And we're going to take this loose. Now we're going to be loosening these bolts and nuts right here that's holding this gear assembly on. And uh, the idea is we're going to loosen this up and drop it and pull the whole bar and everything out of the way. In order to do that, we need to get some of the pressure off. So we've got a floor jack and a six by six. And we're going to raise up onto this arm on our slide here. And we're just going to take the pressure off of the lower gear here. It's not, it's not a thing where like, uh, like once we loosen this, something could fall down and the slide is compromised. It's not, we're just gonna take the pressure off the gear. Just that much. And that'll allow us to loosen this up and drop this down and slide the bar out. These are 9 sixteenths. We're gonna zip these off here. So these don't thread in, but they may be they may be a little sticky, so you may have to unthread it or try working it backwards and pushing from the other side. You can see it's starting to loosen up here. I'm just pushing on the bolt on the back side. It's more of a corrosion and paint thing than a than a pressure thing. There's no pressure on this right now. Okay. So we've got the two bolts out. You can see the gears loose. And we're just gonna slide the bar off of there. We can lower this down to the ground. And that's gonna give us the access to the top bolts that we need. Now with the upper bolts tightened and torqued, we can reinstall the bar. Remember, you wanna do everything uh, before you put this bar back up because it blocks anything that we're gonna do. Now the only thing you need to watch when putting this back up is the orientation of the hole to fit through on the bar there. So uh, it's probably a good idea to get that on there and then just start the nut over here. This way um, everything is going to be lined up and synced up as we come over here and reinstall the gear. So if it's not going into the hole right away, you may have to just turn this gear a little bit like I did. And then just run them through and torque them back down. Don't over tighten these bolts. They were fairly loose. And when you, when you go to take them off, pay attention to how tight they were and then just uh, put them back to that torque level because it's very easy to bend these ears in uh, and make things too tight on these gears. Now with the bracket tightened up, we can continue our installation of the jack just like we did on the rears. With all of our jacks mounted, we're going to move on to the rear sensor. Um, now this is very important to have the orientation, um, how it gets mounted on our camper and Lippert did a good job. Um, that's the front and the rear and this side has to be up. So we have this, we're going to have a metal plate. We're going to have some self-tapping screws. So the rules on mounting this are it needs to be at least even with our rear jacks here in the very center of the camper. 
So that's from roadside to curbside, this way across, it needs to be in the center. So it needs to be either even with that or further back. It, can't just, it just can't be in front of our rear jacks here. So we're gonna slide under here and find a cross member to bolt this to. So we found a pretty good open spot um, that's well behind our rear jacks here. Um, and we're gonna mock this thing up. Uh, we're gonna bolt it up like this. So again, the wire harness, that'll be towards the front and it's gonna go up and this is gonna mount on this plate and then the entire plate We've marked the center point, measured from side to side, and so we have the center point in this entire plate. It's gonna get bolted up here, like this. Okay, now with our sensor secure, let's go take a look at the wiring we're gonna be hooking up. So again, Lippert has done a nice job for us. Um, this is a lot of wiring. Um, but it's clearly marked and labeled. Uh, for instance, the right rear, right here. Uh, left rear, we're gonna have right middle, left middle, and then the right front and the left front. I uh, have my hand here, this is the sensor wire for the, for the uh, rear sensor that we just installed. Uh, it's plenty long too, especially for this camper. This is uh, probably close to 42 feet long and um, we're not gonna have any problems going from the back where we were up to the front. Um, so as far as connections go, uh, these orange triangle ends are gonna be mounting at the jacks and at the sensor. And the other ends like this, where you have a black and a white, these are gonna mount at the control panel up in the nose of the trailer. So um, what we're gonna do right now is I'm going to start hooking up uh, the sensor, the rear sensor, and then all of our jacks, I'm gonna route this wire underneath the trailer um, and towards the front uh, to the nose box where we need to get to. Um, I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna show you the route that I took and how I hooked everything up. Now starting at our rear sensor, this is the furthest point back on our trailer that we've gone and technically we're about 10 feet from the rear. Um, just to let you know how far on this 42 foot trailer there is enough wire for us to, to route this all the way up into the nose where we need to go. So everything that you're going to see right now is just loosely installed. We kept it loose so that you can kind of see how we routed the wires um, and then later, later on we'll come back with wire loom and secure this to the frame. So. This rear sensor, we ran up and over to the left side uh, or road side of the camper. And you can see that the rearmost jack is going to be tied into that, and we ran the wire over across this cross member. This is one of these things where if you want to do, if you're working on your camper and you would prefer to have the wires tucked up under the belly, of course, feel free to do that. It's not necessary. This wire is loomed um, and it's just, it's ready for the elements. And all of the connections are weatherproof, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, I would, you know, consider keeping it tucked up close so that any debris or anything you might come across on the highway isn't gonna catch the wires, but that's the same for all of your pipes and anything else underneath your camper here. So we just have it loosely placed with some zip ties. It does get to be a little bulky as we move forward because we're gonna be adding um, another bunch of cables to it. We have two more mid jacks, as you can see, that we're going to be adding to the wiring and shooting up the curb side of the frame. Now we're starting on the curb side at the mid leveling jack right now. And as we go under, you'll see it's much of the same thing. We're just kind of loosely routing uh, the wiring, I've zip tied it off and we haven't made our connections tight just yet, just so you can see what we're gonna do. Um, there's not really a whole lot of mystery to this. Just keep your wires uh, tight and bundled together. We chose to bundle down the left side of the frame because, um, or, or road side of the frame, um, because this is where we're gonna be installing the control panel up in the nose. So all of these wires are leading up along the left and then eventually gonna end up in our nose cone compartment. So you can see we've got the wires that you're seeing right here are going to be four jacks and the rear sensor harness. Now the front two jacks and their wiring harnesses are already gonna be in the nose cone where we're gonna be making all of our connections. So the wires we brought up 
the side of the frame and into the left side box where we already had a pre-existing hole from the previous jacks that were installed by the manufacturer. We were able to fit all of our wires inside of there and this is where we'll make our connections with our front control panel and level sensor. Up here in the front compartment, we're gonna be mounting our control panel here. Um, this, again, is gonna be side specific. We, you can see it clearly says mount this side up and then we have mount towards the front of the vehicle. So um, the directions tell you to use one inch long wood screws and I would probably advise against that. I'm not sure how thick this plywood is here that they used on the camper, but I've taken some screws and chopped uh, the nose off and we're still going to have a half inch of thread going up into that plywood there so we're going to be plenty fine just like this. If you know your camper and you know you have you know three quarter inch or or, or bigger plywood up here then feel free um, to use whatever wood screw that you need to do. So I've already pre-drilled these um, marked this out. I marked out the center point on here. This again needs to be mounted from left to right and needs to be in the center of the trailer um, and as far forward as we can go and and this is really just about good enough. Um, it's going to be able to pick up all the level readings that it needs with this. We're going to mount this. Um, all of the wires that we ran up inside of here are going to connect to this. You can see it says the left front jack, the left mid jack, in the left rear, same with this side over here, and then our rear sensor is going to plug in as well. Now, something that they don't tell you uh, right off the bat and that you need is going to be a 50 amp breaker. We have these available here at eTrailer. Um, that's what they recommend. Uh, the fuses in here, they recommend no higher than a 30 amp fuse. Um, but to feed this thing is a 50 amp breaker and this can be installed either up here where I'm probably going to do it or down over by the battery. It doesn't matter. We already have wires here. Um, so I may, I may mount it up here. But um, So the next step is going to be routing the wires that we ran inside the camper over to here. Um, I'm going to do that right now um, and we'll get back to you and show you how we did it. Obviously, as you can see, we have plenty of wire for the front jacks that are just right here. Um, it's just, the system's kind of universal, but it is nice to know that it works with such a large uh, toy hauler, such as this one here. And the connections, like I said, are super easy. You really just can't beat this. It's right here, it says right front. These connections simply just snap right in. They snap in nice. Uh, something to think about as you're running this is to think about strain relief. You don't want to be tugging too much left and right. These are connections directly to the circuit board here. So just be gentle and take your time when, when doing this. And when you're done, make sure you take some uh, zip ties or wire loom that you could drill into to keep these wires secure so they're not bouncing going down the road. So this is how we ended up running our wires. Now, you're going to see other wires in this video like that loop right there. That is from the previous jack um, switch to operate the manual jacks. And we disconnected that and just hung it up and looped it out of the way right now. All of our wires are the conduit wires that came with our Lippert system. Um, and the name of the game here is just to run them. We had a beam up in the front. Uh, as you can see right there, and it, it made it convenient because it's a lot of wires that are going up there. So um, it was, it, we were able to use that to support those wires, zip tie it to it, and then run them out to the control panel. And that's where you want to be careful is at the control panel here. You want to make sure that there's no strain on that circuit board. You don't want to zip tie them too tight. As you zip those wires down, it's going to want to pull towards the beam that we're supported on. So be very, very careful when you're doing that. Like I said, it's a lot of wires, but Lippert did a really good job labeling everything. It really was just um, being able to read the right rear, plug it in, left rear, plug it in, and so on and so forth. The uh, only connections we have left here are going to be the power lines, and we're going to run those next. Now, I ended up installing our 50 amp breaker right here. Reason being, uh, this camper was already set up with other 30 amp breakers all along here. Um, and I like to keep things together and grouped up. They had the battery disconnect. They had a, another series 
of breakers here, and I just wanted to keep it easy for the owners. So we have, um, this is going to be the lead that goes up to our control box, the hot. Um, and I jumped off of their 30 amp relay because this line right here goes directly to the battery. This is as good as a uh, battery connection for us. As far as the ground goes, I went down right below this and we terminated uh, again at the battery ground that they're using for the frame ground. So again, this is as good as a battery connection right here. Everything's tight. I ran our wires up and around just like our uh, the jack wires and I just ran them with it over to our control panel up here. Um, not included in the kit. I've got two butt connectors here. Now these are heat shrink butt connectors. Uh, they're rated for outdoor uh, outdoor use, even though this is going to be in an enclosed compartment. Um, this is these are a little bit better quality and I like using them. So we'll make our final connections here. And just like with the jack wires um, and everything else, once we have these connected, I'll be, I will zip tie these wires and secure them, keep them from bouncing as we go down the road. Now we're over on our driver's side um, of the camper and we're in our compartment that you saw me in earlier when we were doing all of the wiring. The first compartment here is gonna be propane. Uh, we don't wanna install our touchpad in this compartment. So we're gonna install it in this compartment, which is our second one. Um, and it's gonna be this thick. We're gonna install it on this board, which was kind of like our bulkhead. Um, and it came out with the two screws. It's the one that gave us the full access to this area here. The nice part about this is we'll be able to slide this out of the camper and make our cuts here. The idea behind putting it right here um, is easy enough. You want to be able to uh, operate your pad, watch your jacks, and look at your hitch, um, either your fifth wheel or gooseneck, um, when you're operating this to see that you've cleared your, uh, your, your hitch on your vehicle. Now this is the harness that we ran up to our control box up inside the camper, um, and we're going to run it right here and then through the back side of this wood. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this wood out, make the cut, mount the box, and we'll hook it up for you next. Now we took our bulkhead panel out of the camper um, and I just made a template real quick and we cut a hole right here and the bezel's gonna go in right there. We will access the wire from behind once we get it in there. The front of this control panel was kinda difficult to get off. Um, I will tell you that on the back side of this, I pressed a small Torx head in over here and I finally got it to click. I tried in the middle here and it was not coming out. So if you're having trouble, try pushing out on the either side here. But we're gonna mount this up with some screws. If you have wood screws, that's fine too. Uh, we're gonna screw the bezel to the plate and bring this back into the camper. Now we've got the bulkhead back in, we've got our wire here, and we'll make the connection back here. I will tell you that one of the things that we're looking at is the depth um, that this is gonna sit back and how this bulkhead mounts up. Once I snap the touch screen back in and make the connection back here, you can see we're about level with the plywood. So I will be putting in a couple of washers here as a spacer, uh, but we had room behind this anyway. It doesn't sit flush with the metal, but just so that these wires don't get pinched, um, and also in your application when you do this, just make sure these aren't gonna get tugged um, when you go to put it back. Our next step is to calibrate the system. Before we do that, with just the front landing gear here, you wanna extend your legs out until they're about four or five inches off the ground. Make sure you do that on both sides. 
Now we're also going to extend our rear jacks down just until they touch. That way, uh, if we have to level side to side, the system will be able to do it. Now with the front and the back both touching the ground, we can set our level in the camper and we'll face it from front to back and we can see that our camper is level. Now space is limited in our shop um, and so without fully extending the slides, I'm going to use a countertop. You would hope that the countertops are level from the manufacturer and I have put it the level in sideways like this and we are within specs and I kind of expected that our shop floor is level so um, if you're at home and you have the room uh, ideally I would extend the slides out and put this on the floor um, just to make sure but you can go ahead and use your countertop as well so with this being said we have uh, level front to back we are level side to side we're gonna go input that into our system to input that you'll hit the front five times and then follow up with hitting the rear five times and then you'll see the system will come you'll have a green light in the middle and it will say that the system is ready the first time you turn your system on this is what it's going to look like and that's wanting a zero point calibration basically um, we're going to level our trailer manually and then from here on out any time that you hit auto level um, this is the uh, the position of the camper that it's going to remember as level so to begin with we can hit front and that's going to start uh, extending our front landing gear. And that was a look at Lippert's Ground Control 3.0 six-point leveling system.